him what you want this morning. Hallelujah, he's in this place. Come on, raise your hands and worship him this morning. We welcome you into our midst, God. You're already here this morning. God, we got to be ready to receive that word to this morning, Jesus. Lord, receive the worship this morning today, God. we got to get into worship with you today, Jesus. We thank you today, God, what you're doing already, Lord. Revive us tonight, God. Revive our hearts today, Jesus. Did our hearts not burn within us? We want our hearts to burn within us today, God, with that fire today, Jesus. With the word of God today, Lord. We want to be hungry today, Jesus. We come hungry today, God. We know we're going to get what we need today, God, because we're going to receive. Because we're going to be hungry. And we're going to receive that word today, God. We just thank you. Come on, just keep worshiping Him this morning, Lord. Raise your hands and keep worshiping Him this morning. Get your eyes on Him today, God. We thank you today, Jesus. We worship you today, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're in this place today, God. You're in this place today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's torn up pages in this book. Words that tell me I'm no good. Chapters that define me for so long. But the hands of grace and endless love dust it off and hit me up. Told my heart that hope. Oh, come on, Lord, ship him this morning. Hallelujah. Lift your voices to him this morning. We'll hold on tight to what you know. He promised he won't let you go. Your song of healing strength.
a broken heart, He holds my heart, He never fails. When I'm at my weakest, I will trust in Jesus, always in the highs and lows, the one who goes before me. God is in this story. I'm going to say God's in our life this morning. Come on. Come on, just worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that God's in the details this morning? Aren't you glad God's in the details this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. He's a mighty good God. You can be seated this morning. Thank you for being with us this morning. Let's give the Lord one more shout of praise, would you? Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. I know he's a mighty good God this morning. Turn around, smile at somebody this morning, say, good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be here. Amen. Appreciate God's goodness. Amen. Before I change the service this morning, um, there was a note here on my desk or on my pulpit here uh, to, for Brother Trevor Pelston. Is he with me this morning? Yeah, there he is. He's read the Bible already through this year. Him and Sister Audra, I think, had a, a challenge of some kind. And, amen, he's, he took her up on her challenge and got her money. <laughs> oh, he didn't know he was getting. I don't know. I just feel something in there. But God's good this morning. Come on, Trevor. You get the card. I'll get the money. That's why you don't know him about that. Read that Bible all the way through. Let's stand and give him a good hand this morning. Bless you. Congratulations, young man. Bless you, buddy. Love you. Well, that's awesome this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. See, Sister Audra, if you want to take her up on that challenge, her and Brother Gary will supply. But God's a good God. Okay. Hallelujah. But God's a good God this morning. Amen. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord this morning. So good to see everybody. You'll, Amen. I'm done read through it. Somebody shout hallelujah. But God is good this morning. Appreciate his mercies this morning. Amen. Well, give Brother Jason a good hand as he comes and receives our tithes and offerings this morning. Thank you, everyone, for being with us here at Solid Rock this morning. Amen. And God is good. And Amen. We're so blessed that we can even have health to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. And um, we're going to, to receive the tithes and offering, uh, uh, going to that portion of the service. And again, and we just appreciate and love all our members and all those who are visiting. Amen. Thank you for all you do for our church and all that you sow into the kingdom of God. Amen. And, and, and when you give into the kingdom of God, you know where your priorities are. Amen. And we could talk about out of Deuteronomy this morning. We could talk about, you know, how that, you know, we have all these things that we, we build it not, you know, and, and God supplies all that. Amen. And I was reading here this morning in the book of Haggai where it talks about, amen, it was talking about things and uh, 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 financial things. In verse 6 in, in Haggai 1, it said, You have so much and you bring in little. Amen. You have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled. And you clothe, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put in a bag with holes. Amen. And and sometimes, you mean, if you ever wonder, I mean, why am I not getting out of this? Or why am I not, amen, making no gain? I mean, amen. And, and it goes on down here and it talks about how, amen, they was putting their money in the wrong house. Amen. The Lord was wanting them to build a house of God. Amen. How, how many of us this morning are willing to give something to God? Amen. And, God, I want to be blessed, but I can't trust you to do it. Amen. So I, I believe that's what these people was thinking. Lord, I, I want all these things, but I can't trust your house with it, God. Amen. I'll trust mine. Amen. But I can't trust you. Amen. In Malachi, it talks about, and I know y'all know the book of Malachi. And I've re it said in verse 8, it said, will a man rob God? I don't want to be a robber this morning. Amen. I want to give God what's his. Everything we have this morning is because God give it to us. 
said, will a man rob God? Amen. Yet, how have we, you, it says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, Come but on, you bro. say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Amen. Lord, I'll give, and, and, but I don't trust you to be a tither. Lord, I trust you, amen, to keep me safe on the highways, but I can't trust you with my finances. Lord, I, I can't afford to give my tithes. Amen. I've got bills due. But God said that, amen, you may not have rain in $100 bills. He said, but your meal barrel would never run dry. He said that you would always have enough. In sufficiency, you would always have enough. Amen. He said, you are cursed with a curse if you have robbed me. Amen. I hope this morning we don't we don't we don't sit next to a thief or a robber. Amen. I know that's a little bit harsh. But the offering takers will come. We'll get ready to receive the offering. I hope, Amen, that you've considered being a tither. He said that I would make you the head and not the tail. He said that I would make you above and not beneath. Amen. I don't care how much money you got this morning. Amen. But are, if you've got $5, are you willing to give God, amen, a nickel of it this morning? Amen. That's all I'm... He asked for 10%, amen, of what He's blessed us with. Amen. And amen. I, if you don't have no money, you're welcome here. Amen. But I'm telling you this morning, I want you to be above and not beneath. I want you to be, a, I want you to be blessed of the Lord this morning. How many is with me this morning? I'm not no Judas. I'm not just going to take, take, take. And no. Judas wanted all the blessings of God. Amen. He wanted, but amen. How many this morning, amen, don't want to steal from God? No. Reach your hands this way. Let's ask the Lord's blessing. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, that you've blessed us this week. We thank you that you've kept our homes safe and our families safe, Lord God. That you've blessed us financially. That we could even be here this morning. Lord, as we sow into the kingdom of God, Lord, we ask you to bless and multiply just as you did the fish in the loaves. Lord, we ask you to, to send it upon our kids. We ask you to send it upon our families this morning, God. We ask you to send the rain upon those with the heart to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wandering into the night. I wanted a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones. And I tried with all my might. And I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. Oh, vagabond. And just when I ran out of a road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. Well, he picked me up, turned me around. Because he gave my heart, he changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. I cannot deny what I see, I've got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning. Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my friends A burning and bitter nights You can't keep them moving No, you're not welcome here From now till I walk the streets of old I'll think of how you saved my soul This wayward son has his way back home. Well, he picked me up, he turned me around, he slaced my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name, forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Sing how you saved my soul. This way 
morning and he healed our hearts this morning when he saved us he healed us in advance he already healed us and he said it's free and he's thankful this morning hallelujah come on and give your pastor a good hand this morning as he comes this morning hallelujah well i'm glad to be saved this morning aren't you give god another shout of praise in the house amen hallelujah hallelujah He's a mighty good God. You can be seated. God bless you. We can hear you. Yeah, well, no. Well, yes, you may. I want to thank God that he took care of me Tuesday. I've had a couple of little accidents this week, just falling and things that went on with me in the past week. So Tuesday, uh, I was picking up nail or screws and stuff with a little magnet there on the job site. And I was looking down, walking around, and we had a brace sticking down, and the end of it was, I didn't realize it was exactly the height of my eyeball. And it was sticking down, and I caught the very end of it with this eye that I've been work, you know, has been working with for what, over a year, almost two years. And just as soon as it hit it, I had some liquid running down my face. And, uh, I mean, it was really, really hurting. And I throwed my hand on it and went to the vehicle, and it, it knocked the stitch out of it that I wanted to out the last time, but I was convinced to leave it in there. But it hit hard enough. It cut the stitch and knocked the covering off the eyeball that he had protecting the eyeball to trying to hold that liquid in there. And uh, so I called Shirley which she already knowed I'd done had two little accidents before that. And I hated to call her because I knew I was going to get a chewing. <laughs> so, <laughs> too bad, was it? <laughs> so the pain wasn't as bad as listening to her. <laughs> so, so I called her and I said, uh, you might want to call my eye doctor. I said, we've got to go to E-Town or Louisville Warren. I said, I've done something to my eye. Yeah. And it was really hurting, so I went ahead and drove home. I put my patch back on it, which I had it off. And uh, I drove home, and she was ready to take me to Louisville. And we finally got to Louisville. And uh, when the doctor, uh, before we went in to see the doctor, the nurse, the one takes you back and lets you read the little signed letters and stuff on the wall, she said, can you take that cover off? And I said, yes. And uh uh, so I took it off, and she put that little thing to where I could look through my right eye first, and I read it decent. And then she said, turn it around. I thought, it ain't going to do no good turn it around because I can't see nothing. So when I looked at that, I read further down the chart with this eye that I just got hit than I did with the one that was supposed to have been the good eye. <laughs> and... My eye. When I got back there to see the doctor, he said, well, I don't know what they told him because they worked me in. It wasn't my regular doctor. It was another one that worked under him. And when I got back there to him, uh, he said, that eye looks better than I expected 
to what I was going to say, so I don't know what they told him, but I thank God that all it done was to knock the cover off, the stitch out, and put a little scratch on that eye, a little cut, whatever, on my eyeball. And uh, But I thank God that, that it wasn't yes. worse than, you know, as bad as I thought it was, because yeah. I thought it was going to have to do something to it. You know, all the way up our shirt was driving, I thought, yeah, they're going to keep me tonight and probably had to do something in the morning because my surgeon one have been working with me is not there. But I got a good report from that, and I've got to go back tomorrow and just let him look at it again. But I thank God for taking care of me. Good job. Bless you, man. Hallelujah. Anybody want to take Brother Buddy home this evening, it would be, be a privilege because I'd like to have him back tonight. But God... But God but God is good. Who knows that God's good? Laughter is a medicine. Some of us need a whole big bottle of it. Some of us wouldn't hurt us have a quart. Somebody shout hallelujah. But God is good this morning. Amen. Amen. You may go to your Sunday school this morning. Amen. Uh, Brother Michael's class, stay with me this morning. I know y'all would rather have me anyhow, so just be excited. Brother Terry, is, is that your daughter? Is that your daughter? She been here before. She been here before, right? Okay, but it's good to have you this morning. It really is. It's good to. S- Amen. Amen. It's good to see Sister and Sister. What's their names? Oh, Rachel and Sheila. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Gil, <laughs> Hallelujah. but God is good. <laughs> Y'all still love me? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> but God is good this morning. Glad Sister Gail's feeling better this morning. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. God's a good God this morning. You that have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Luke's gospel this morning. Chapter number five. Thank everybody that prayed for us Thursday night in Indiana. We had an awesome good time up there. Somebody always asked me, did you have a good service? I said, what do you think I'm going to tell you? Somebody shout hallelujah. It was, it was awesome, and God was a good God, and appreciate the mercies of God this morning. Amen. I want to share some things with you that the Lord uh, really dealt me upon, and, and um, how, how many knows, uh, I, I thought about doing it, but I did, I did really want to uh, bring it out here this morning. But sometimes you've got to go before God like a man, like you do in a mirror. And you've got to see some things yourself if you're going to change anything. And especially you ladies that has a husband, you can tell him and tell him and tell him and tell him. But until he sees any profit in it, he ain't going to change much. Oh, that went over real good. How many knows you've got to see to change? You really got to see certain things. To, and that's why Jesus even told stories. He used the landscape. He used different things around him. He used the farmer. He used sheep. He used goats. He used doors. He used different things to get the people to see or to perceive, to understand things uh, in their life. And this morning... Uh, I want to share some things, and I want you to be able to see this this morning. And amen. Everybody shout, the person in the mirror, the mirror. is me. Uh, and, w- and when you look at that, amen, and uh, when you look at that this morning and you understand God, I thank you that I'm not where I used to be. But God, the journey's not over yet. How I many knows the journey is not over? Amen. So let's read verse 17 this morning, starting the Word of God, chapter number 5, verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that was Jesus, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by. Now, can you imagine this morning coming in here and you've got the elite group of doctors of the law, scholar, Bible scholars, and amen, and they knew the law into the end, they knew every cross of a T and every dot of an I. They knew that, and anything you deviated from that, 
upset them. And they were, they were zealous for the law, but not for the truth. The Bible says this, they will come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Some of these people walked every bit of 80 miles to get there to find some kind of fault with Jesus. And those the devil will go to any limit and any length to hinder you. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men, Mark's gospel says there was four of them. Men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before Jesus. And when they could not, look at this. Everybody read this with me right here. And when they could not find by what way, how many of you feel like that you just can't find a way to get in? You ever feel that way? You just feel like you cannot get to where you want to get. But when they could not find what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop, led him down through the tiling with his couch into the mist before Jesus. And when Jesus, or when he saw their faith, he said unto, them, unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? They didn't know that that was God in the flesh right there. And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering and said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts? Now, how many knows that God knows our hearts? Whether it's easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise up and walk, which is the easiest. But they knew but that you may know that the Son of Man has power upon the earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, took up what that was where, whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. I love this next scripture. They were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. How many of you like to see some things a little out of the ordinary today? How many like to see some things out of the ordinary? Well, I want you to take this finger, point it back here and say right here where it starts. You can be seated. God bless you this morning. I know that God's a mighty good God. Now, I want you just to say with me, through the roof. Through the roof. Now, how many knows this morning, and I, I, I don't want to, and I'll, I'll bring him in at different times, but the paralyzed man, the paralegic guy there, I don't want to just talk about him. I want to talk about the four guys that got him there. And this morning, when you and I look at this or this story here, amen, raise your hand and say, I'm one of them four. And how many knows that we've got to come together as one to get anything done? These four men could have had four different ideals, and every one of them could be good, but they had to come together in unity to decide what they were going to do. Now, when they got there and they, got, they brought this man, the Bible doesn't say their names. It doesn't tell even where they came from. It doesn't tell how far they had walked or anything. It could have been next door. It could have been 20 miles they packed this guy. It doesn't say. So I'm not sure. We're not sure. But it does, it begins to bring to the ideal, amen, that it had to be more than just a few steps. Can I get a witness in the house? Now, what they were doing, and the man that I want to use on the cop this morning is our own needs, our brokenness, our helplessness, our excuses. Can I get a witness in here this morning? Our 
our hindrances that keeps us from the will of God this morning. Now, as I said a while ago, these men, they, re they remain nameless. We don't know how far they came. We don't know how long they traveled. They don't say how tired they were when they arrived. But when they got there, they wanted to bring that man in there. See, when we go to church sometimes after we get here, we get talked out of certain things by our own selves. So we've got to be in, in, in unison this morning, amen, to say, God, I want your will in my life today. You've got to remember, God has a time for everything. For everything, there's a time and there's a season. There's a time to get married. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. That was a time to get victory. So when you and I look at all of this this morning, and I just want you to get this picture of these four men, and they're carrying this paralytic man, and amen, he, he, he's helpless. He, he can't walk. He's paralyzed. And amen, then, amen, there's nothing really he can do. When they get there and they get to the house where Jesus was at, the Bible says the house was full. They were outside the door of this house. Amen. And it was full. And they could not get anywhere because, amen, that there was a crowd of people. Now, you know, if we were here this morning and, amen, and the church was pretty well running over, but if there's people that came in with wheel, in wheelchairs or, or, or cots, amen, we'd try to make a, a room for them. But that wasn't a person said, I'll help you get in. Hey, feller, Joe in front of me, move over where they can get through. None of this. Y'all with me this morning? There was nobody that really seemed to care if this man got in there or not. But it ain't up to other people. It's up to you. How many believes that this morning? And really this morning, every one of us to a point are exactly what we want to be. Because most time we, <laughs> that went over pretty good. Because most time, if we're just getting by or we're maintaining, we think that's good enough. But God never just wants you to maintain. Now I know there's a scripture where it says, when you've done all to do, you stand. I understand that. But a lot of times we get to the place that we get relaxed and just stand where we're at. Not too bad. We, we're making it. But when you get desperate for the things of God, you'll do unusual things. Can I get a witness in here? And every one of us this morning should have a desire because we've got something on that bed or on that cot or on that couch that needs a touch of God. Every one of us this morning has got something on that cot that needs a touch of God. How many believes that this morning? Every one of us has got a need in here this morning. And I don't want to be a needy person all the time. But yet at the same time, when I've got a situation in my life that's a hindrance, I want to get it to God. How many of y'all don't want to be hindered any longer? And there's always going to be something to hinder you. You're always going to have opposition. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse number 9. Look at this. The great apostle Paul, the man that could raise the dead, he could shake poisonous vipers off of his hand. The man that could be shipwrecked and survive. The man that could be beaten with stones and, and survive. And he said, for there's a great door, an effectual door is open unto me. God has opened a door for me. God has made a way for me. This door is a producing door for people to get saved, to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, folks, anytime you've got anything to do for God, you're going to have opposition. If it's nothing but go to church and raise your hand. And just let that preacher know, I'm standing with you. Keep on preaching like you're preaching. Amen. 
He said there's a great door, a great opportunity. It's an effectual opportunity for me. And there are many adversaries that's going to try to stop me from doing the will of God. How many knows this morning somebody's got to do the will of God in this church? Somebody's got to be a worshiper. Somebody's got to be a praiser. Somebody's got to get out of your comfortable zone. Somebody's got to walk in the spirit and say, I'm here by the grace of God. And if I can't get in this way, if I can't find a way in this way, I'm going to do something unusual. I'm just going to get through the roof. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, it's, we're going through the roof this morning. By the grace and the power of God, we're going to go through the roof. Anybody like to go through the roof this morning? Amen. Now, I don't know what the guy of the house might think about it, but it really didn't matter. Them guys come too far to look back now. They went too far to stop by the grace of God. Can I get a witness in here? Listen, folks, uh, you're always going to have certain things in your life, but you've got to have a determination and the power and the persistence uh, and the tenacity to say, I will not quit. How many, you know, I mean, easiest thing we've ever done in our life is to quit. Just to sort of give in, compromise with it. But we've got to have a church that pushes, that knows how to press their way in the sight. See, if you don't learn how to press in, Riley, when you see a cute little guy somewhere, you're Riley, aren't you? She never moved when I called her name. <laughs> KK can't use you. You done found him. Braxton, Molly, don't slide down the seat. I can see her, Steve. <laughs> Sarah. But anyhow, I'm just, amen. You say, who is that? What's their name? And if they really, you start finding out who they are. You won't stop there. How many of y'all done that? Some of y'all raised your hand like this. But God's still good. And mostly God's still good. See, most time, God, if you want, and, and I hear people say this, and, and, and it, it's okay, but it's not okay. If God wants me to have it, he'll just give it to me. Well, God does want you to have it, and he will give it to you. But between that <laughs> is where we get our adversaries. Can I get a witness? God wants me to have it. And he wants to give it to me. But in between that, I've got a problem. I've got something that don't want me to have it. I've got something that wants to oppose me every time I want it. How many of y'all really want a revival? How many of you really, uh, I mean, you really want one. Now, God knows your heart now. Amen. How many of you really, do you pray, God, let me be revival. God, let me go in the closet and shut the door until I'm on fire for God. Amen. Not looking for the preacher, not looking for his brother Ronnie, not looking for sister Dory, but God, I want to be on fire. God, I want, I'm not waiting for somebody else to come and get me by the hand, uh, and that may be all right sometimes, but God, I want to be able to go get somebody. He might feel like that now. Amen. See, sometimes if we're not careful, we're always waiting on somebody else. If they'll do it, I'll help them. And that's good. You may not be a leader, but yet at the same time, you ought to be on so much a fire that somebody says, I'll get you. Can I get a witness in here? You never want to take somebody with you who want to work that wants excuses. They want to figure out how not to work. Can I get a witness in here? I've took folks with me. One guy said, I want to go help you put that tent up. He said, I want to be a tent boy. I took him with me. This is the God's truth. We went to Monticello. We got sledgehammers out. He looked at them like them was demons. <laughs> this is the truth. We're going to set that tent up. We got a, probably 75 stakes to drive. It's 90 degrees. Amen. He goes over to a little old bush about this high in the fence row, and he stands there like this. And I say, where's so-and-so? They say, he's over on that tree. I say, come here. 
I put a sledgehammer in his hand. And I said, I want you to work with me. I'm going to show you how to drive these stakes. Wow. He didn't like that. He thought he's just going to be a tent boy. He's going to be there with Brother Wayne, and all the glory he's going to get. I give him some glory with a sledgehammer. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's the only glory we're going to get is sweat. Come on, somebody. Shout with me here this morning. Amen. See, you cannot go out with already looking for a reason or an excuse, amen, not to finish the job. Can I get a witness in here? See, I can't get victory over some things, but if I get the fire of God in me, I can overcome anything. You can overcome any problem in your life if you get enough God in your life. And that's why it's the day that the church is more or less lukewarm is because we're not getting enough fire. We're just getting enough to warm ourselves. But when you're willing to tear the roof off and to go through the roof, things will change in your life. Can I get a witness in here? He said, I know, I, I, I've talked to uh, probably hundreds over the years, uh, amen, of young people that's bound on drugs or, or bound on something or they're bound by something or bound by pornography or bound by something, and amen. And I, they say, I, I keep wanting to go back. I keep wanting to go back. I, I said, I won't tell you something. Uh, amen, that devil's always going to be out there to tempt you to go back because he once knew what your weakness was uh, and he's going to try it. Uh, but if you get enough God in you, uh, ever time he comes around he says I hate to get close to him because he's more of God than he is man amen, amen. amen. that's why the Bible says when your children are small teach them amen don't drag them to church and them not even know what they're going to church for it's just because mom and daddy's got something Teach them the goodness of God teach them about the love of God teach them the things of God pound it in their spirits Listen, folks, going to church don't make you anything. You can go to church all your life and go to hell. That's sad, but you can. But you get something on the inside of you that's greater than what's on the outside, it won't matter what's on the outside. This, these four guys... They carried a man that was helpless, unable to do anything for himself. See, sometimes what you are carrying is yourself to a point in that bed. Things that you have to deal with and struggle with. Things that feels helpless in your life. That you feel broken in your life with. Can I get a witness? They're looking mean at me over here. Let me go over here and preach a minute. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Oh, at least y'all smiling for a minute at least. I'm going to say God's good this morning. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. Amen. Give, give, give me four guys here. Give me four guys. Three more guys. Three more. Three more. Amen. Yeah. Hold this cot, fellas. Hold the cot. Hold the cot. You in front. You in front. Oh, you go. Good help here. We got it. All right, now. Hold, hold the cot. Oh, you go. See, every one of you are determined to get your victory. But every time you want to get your victory, there's going to be something in your way. Every one of us. I get a message from God. I can sit in the presence of God, amen, for four or five days and, amen, spend hours and endless hours. It burns in my heart, and I come to church, and there'll be something to try to hinder that every time I come. To stop it from getting to you. But I got my mind made up. I'm going to get to you. One way or the other. <laughs> so if I've got to climb the tree and fall out on him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, that man came down there. Amen, can you imagine when they got there, amen, and the crowd was there, and they looked and said, what are y'all here for? You can't get in there. There ain't no room in there. Y'all just must go back home. Now, what's your decision now? I mean, folks, you're not going to get in there, but the power of the Lord is present, and you can feel it out. Come out here. You can feel that sense of God drawing you and say, come on in. Come on, come on. Let me ever feel that? Come on. Because Spirit of God said, get out and start walking. Raise them hands. Holler glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody said, well, we don't supposed to do that in church. I'm going to tell you, when you get to heaven, you're going to do it. You better get to practicing down here. Can I get a witness in the house? 
Hallelujah. I still believe in that old time Holy Ghost. Amen. And I, I, I got a revelation the other night. I, I was sitting there in church and amen. And I, I realized, uh, amen, I, I preached it Thursday night about them old folk get it in their hand uh, and they start doing this. Uh, what I began to realize, uh, and it took me back to a TV program, uh, amen, where they had kept their hands tied uh, and the moment they turned them loose, they'd do this. Uh, they'd get that blood circulating again. Uh, you know what? Uh, my, I've been set free. Uh, I've been untied. Uh, I got something uh, to raise my hands for. Uh, I got something to praise God for. I don't care what you think. Uh, I know what he's done. Uh, I got to tell somebody, look what the Lord uh, has done. Somebody ought to stand to your feet and give God just a little. Oh, yeah, go. God's good this morning. Listen, I know I'm a preacher. You young people, I'm trying my best to, to help y'all because you've got a rough world out there. Y'all got a rough world out there. You got a murdering world out there. You got a world that'll bind you with so many things. It's unreal that can bind you that I didn't have in my generation. Hey Amen. When I got when I went to school, the one of the worst things was saying a dirty word or chewing chewing gum. Or backsize than a teacher. I didn't do that because I got backsized when I got home. Somebody shout hallelujah. I was respectful. That's one thing I was. Somebody shout hallelujah. Respect somebody because you, one day you're going to want respect. Young people, hear me this morning. Respect your mom and your daddy. I don't care if they make you so mad you blow steam at your toes. Respect your mom and daddy. Give them some honor. They wiped you when you was dirty. Amen. They bought you, they sacrificed for you when you didn't, amen, when they did, well, they could have had it for themselves. Shout me down, church. And no parent is perfect. Well, Brother Seth may be, but other than that, we ain't got nobody in here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Nobody does it all right. Nobody's done it all right. We try our best. But sometimes we fail. We do our best in our own judgment to help certain things. But we've got four guys out here. We've got a man on the cot. His needs are beyond understanding. And just anybody can't meet his need. He can't just go anywhere and get his need met. Y'all hear me? You just can't go someplace to get your need met. They, they can't even meet their own needs. Go ask a broke man for bar twenty dollars. He'll look at you and say, "I wish I had 20. Can I get a witness in here? The church ought to be a supply house. And the Bible said the Lord was in there and the Spirit of God was in there and the Spirit of the Lord of healing. Uh, and that healing was not only uh, for the physical body, uh, but them Pharisees uh, and them lawyers uh, and them doctors uh, that were blind. Uh, they may have walked in there, but they were blind and could not see. Amen. We got church people that go to church and say they know the Bible, but they don't live it. They're blind. Amen. Amen. If ever who leads you, you better make sure they ain't blind. Because they'll blind you with their blindness. That's the way it works, ain't it, brother buddy? Right there. Right there's where you need it at. I done brother buddy that way one day. Somebody shout hallelujah. I've done a lot of things. But God's good. I'm going to say God's still good. Now, you've got to watch because blind people know it all. They've got, they, they know it all. Well, I've got, got to tell you one thing. I don't know it all. But I know one thing. I know how to keep out of the ditch. Somebody shout hallelujah. I stay as far from that ditch as I can. I stay as far as from that cliff as I can by the grace of God. 
Don't let people tell you, well, everybody does it. Don't walk that edge of this thing because one day, listen, let me tell you all another story. Amen. Amen. I, I, I was, listen, we, 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 we had a tub in our house, but it wasn't a bathtub. It was a wash tub. Big round tub. We poured water in it. And after about three of us washed and took a bath in it, we throwed it out. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You wasn't the only one that took a bath in that tub. There was a couple more that took a bath in that tub. Anybody, come on, anybody here that poor? Yeah, it's going to clean it. That's about the way it was. But Mama cleaned us. We had them little black, black birches on, that little white shirt, them little suspenders, little bow tie. Oh, man. Me and David and Timmy all got a bath in that water. And for some unknown reason, there's something. Come here, Kyle. Come here, buddy. Come here. You ain't got, you, your boys are in there, ain't they? I, I wasn't this tall. I wasn't this handsome as he is. Now, I did have some hair at that time, old. <laughs> Maybe not that much. God forgive me for lusting after hair. Somebody. <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm dressed up, I'm all sharp, and I go back in that room, and I sit down on the edge, edge. We talk about, we talk about an edge. I ain't talking about a seat. I'm talking about an edge of a tub. Mama said, don't sit down there, son. You'll fall in. No, not me. David might. Timmy might. Not me. I'm Wayne. <laughs> Help me out, Brother Jim. <laughs> Help me look so bad. Help me not look so bad because I know you, you ain't done them like that. And I said, and I was doing pretty good. I thought, I'm smarter than Mama. I'm smarter than Mama. I'm sitting on the edge of that tub. But somehow, while I'm sitting there, why, why would I want to go sit on the edge of that tub? Why would I do that? Not already ready. And it's full of water. Why would I want to do that? Preach to me, church. Why would I want to do that? Why? You went down to number two. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? To prove I'm right? I ain't sure what I'll, I'm about eight, nine years old. I'm sitting there. I'm pretty confident. I got that smirky smile on my face. <laughs> but the next thing I know, I don't know how it happened. I don't know what happened. Oh, the next thing I know is, I'm sitting in the bottom of that tub with my feet sticking out. <laughs> and you know, this, and my mama thinks she's smart. She said, I told you so. She acted like she was right. She wasn't right. I sat there for a while. But boy, the, and that was no price to pay at all to compare to what people pay today. But I learned I only sat on one tub on the edge one time. Somebody shout amen. I don't do that no more. I learned a lesson. Now you're number one again. Somebody shout hallelujah. But I wonder this morning, what, what's on that cot for you? What's in that cot? If, if it's you, what, what, what is your need in the cot? What is your need? Walk, fellas, walk a little bit. You can't come no closer. Just, you, there, there's no room. Just stay where you're at. I mean, leave things alone. Okay? 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 Because they're going to mess it up here in a minute. Can I get a witness in the house? Listen, the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord was in that house. And the power of the Lord was in that house to heal. But you'll find that nobody was getting healed. If the Lord can come in the midst, nobody get healed. Something's wrong. 
Can I get a witness in here? No blinded eyes were getting open. Nobody was getting stirred. Uh, nobody had been touched with the love of God to have compassion uh, on somebody. They were just there. Can I get a witness this morning? But brother, uh, that one looked at the other and, uh, and said, wait a minute. Didn't come this far to quit. Didn't come this far, amen, to play no games. Didn't come this far to make an excuse. Well, the preacher this, the preacher that, this or that, amen. And people do this all the time. They're hurt over this. They're hurt over that. Listen, folks, get hurt because the devil's killing people. Can I get a witness in this house this morning? Thank you, son. You done fell in and got a bath again. Give God a shout of praise in the house this morning. Come on, give God a shout of praise. You're going to have to deal. Amen. Uh, brother, I've got anticipation. I, I, I come expecting. Uh, listen, folks. Uh, amen. Uh, if, we, if I got a certain preacher in here, it was thrilled people. Uh, oh, I hear about him. Uh, I've seen him on TV. And people come with a different attitude to church. Yeah. Yeah. We holler, Tommy Bates is coming. I ain't on Tommy Bates. There's their neighbor. Or so-and-so big-time preacher's coming. Oh, man, this house would be packed. And there's an anticipation. I don't know if they want to see. They want to ever what they want to do. I don't know. But God is in this house every time we walk in here. You need to realize, amen, I'm coming with an anticipation that something is going to happen. I came this way, but I'm not going to leave like I came. Can I get a witness? Uh, revival is in the land and it can pass you by. Amen. God, what are we going to do with this man? Well, I'll tell you what to do. Let's just lay him down here and when the crowd breaks up and things happen, maybe the Lord will come by and heal him. At least we, at least we look what we've done. I mean, we, we tried. How many ever said, I tried? I told the Lord when I said, Lord, you can help me if you wanted to. God says, I am. I'm molding you like I want you, not like what you want. God don't want you to have a, now God wants you to have a blessed life, a good life, a happy life, but God don't want you to have a, a spiritual relaxed life. Amen. Because you'll get where you get lukewarm on God. And those trials sometimes are a blessing. Amen. Things that I thought was bad for me has been good for me. It's put something in me that, amen, hallelujah, amen. How many of you what I'm saying to you this morning? Amen. amen. The easiest thing you can do is quit sometimes. Or you, really you don't quit. You just sort of resign this place. And you just say, well, I'm just standing. I'm just, and, and I'm not knocking that because that's scriptural. But after a while, so long of standing, you're going to get weary. You're going to get tired. You're going to get exhausted. If you ain't careful, you won't stand no further. And I'm going to tell you, Braxton, you've got a life ahead of you. I've done spent the most of mine. I've done spent the most of my life. But you, you've got more life in front of you than i got behind me or i got in front of me. Miley, Riley, Blake. Ethan, all y'all, somebody shout amen. amen. I can't afford to make no mistakes either. But I'm just telling you, don't make them. Because they'll cost you. And then you have, you have this ghost that follows you and haunts you all the time. And every time you want to do something for God, he'll say, no, you can't. And you feel guilty. And you feel unworthy. And you feel like, God, I can't do anything. But you can because, listen, now listen to me. And, and I've had people get mad at me. I have people that don't understand me. People don't love me. Amen. I don't care if you've sinned 490 times a day. I will forgive you. But I might not let you preach. Amen. That's it. Till you quit that sinning. That's right. Amen. Don't get cold on me. Because you've got to be an example before yes, sir. I forgive you. I release you. But i got to make sure you're going to walk. 
and, and, and you can fall. I'll help you. But my God, after a while, there should be a change. Yes, sir. Preach on a while, Brother Wayne. Believe a will. Amen. I don't want somebody that's had 29 wrecks trying to teach me how to drive. Amen. If you've been married 14 times, don't tell me how to have a good marriage. You might could tell me, but I, I, I sure want to sift that through. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I called that lady called me over and she said, uh, uh, would you marry us? She said, and, and she, boy, they're, they're slick something. Now. I think we're a little kin. I don't care if you're my sister. I said, uh, have you been married before? Yeah. I said, how many times have you been married? I believe it was eight. That ain't, that ain't bad enough. That ain't bad. I said, how old are you? She said, 29. She didn't keep them long enough to know their name. I said, no, no. I said, I, I can't do that. I said, find you another preacher. Praise God. Amen, Brother Wayne. Amen. <laughs> I wasn't going to make it number nine for her. But anyhow, on that bed, there's a need. There's a hindrance that's trying to hinder you from getting your total victory. And, and maybe everybody at the door wanted to get something to. <laughs> Thank God I'm ahead of you. At least I get something for you to, in case it runs out. Amen. But this man, had to have something. But, but it wasn't really about that man. It was about when Jesus, when they took the tiles off of the roof, which was a flat roof according to, according to history, and, and it was thatched over with, with layers of, of, of branches, of, of palm branches types. And amen, it was tied and interwoven that water would not even get in there. Amen. And it took some, uh, amen. Uh, in Mark's gospel, the word in Hebrew or in the, in the Greek means he, they dug through. They dug through the roof. You ever dig around something to get down to it? That's how they done on that roof. They dug around it. They said, we're going to go up on that roof, and we're going to let that man down. They got up there somewhere, probably could hear the voice of Jesus, and said, he's about right here. And they began to take that roof off. How many of y'all willing this morning to take the roof off? How many of y'all willing to go through the roof this morning? Amen. That's not the normal. Uh, that's not the protocol. Uh, but amen, if that's what it takes to get you healed, why don't you do it this morning? Amen. Amen. I was at Columbia Tent Revival one time. Man, it was hard. It seemed like every devil in four counties had come to, to, to handle that revival. Amen. Had a good crowd and everything going. But ever in service night, that was something that would hinder that. Something that would, amen, that would just come against that service. And I went to that morning. I got me a bottle of oil. I got to anoint them uh, posts all the way around the tent. But the Lord spoke to me and said, would you be willing to crawl all the way around this tent? And Lord, they're already looking at me, not in poles. If I get on my knees and start crawling around here, that's when piles is across the road and they're coming in and out, Green River door. I mean, he was just like a, a bees in a hive, in and out. And that tent, all of a sudden, that tent got real big. When the Lord said, would you be willing to crawl on your knees around there? Now, that wasn't the ordinary. God had never spoke that to me before, and I'd been in the tent industry probably 15 years. God never told me to do that. I said, yes, Lord. And I thought, you know, just agreeing with the Lord, that'd be good enough. The Lord, would, that Lord knew my heart. Shout me down and come on, somebody. Come on. I mean, I thought the Lord knew that that I'd be willing to do that. And, and if the Lord knows I'm willing, I guess that's good enough. The Lord said, crawl. And I got on my hands and knees and went all the way around that tent. And I was praising the Lord. Somebody said, that's humiliating. Let me tell you what happened that night. The devil wasn't there. If he was, he got stepped on. I don't know. Because God showed up. 
I broke something through obedience by the power of God. There was a time that you was going to get holler, well, praise the Lord. And everybody said, is that Shane? It don't matter what they think. All of a sudden, you got something that will change your life. Can I get a witness in the house this morning? Listen, if you only plant at the edge of the water, you're going to keep your own, you're always going to keep your needs. Hear me? And, and, and I fight battles. I struggle sometimes. But every time I try to, I try to go out a little further. Every time I go out a little further, that gets less hold of me. Anger, resentment, bitterness. We've got kids now. I seen some up in Indiana there the other day. They're so angry. They're, they're mad all the time. They tear stuff up. They beat stuff up. They destroy things because they're angry about something. And they don't, they don't even know why they're angry. They're just angry. They're angry. They're resentful. I don't have what you got, or I ain't got this, or this happened to me. I didn't get a fair shake. I was born on the other side of the tracks. I don't know. I didn't have a mama. Amen. My daddy never saw, never saw him. And those things would be hurtful. I'm not saying those things are not. But to go and to start living the same life that they're living and doing the same thing they're going to do. Somebody shout amen. Every one of you young people need a, one of these. How many of you young people got one of them? Raise your hand if you got one of them. Come here, Braxton. I'll, I'll teach you. Then you can teach the girls. You're the boss, ain't you? Look, take this. Got it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why you be mad when you be happy? Come on, somebody. Am I telling y'all the truth this morning? Sometimes some of y'all need to. <laughs> now go home and teach them girls. Right. You come here with two black eyes. I know that your lesson didn't, didn't go over well. But God's still good. How many knows God's still good? God knows that God's still good. He's still good to you. Hey, but don't be angry all the time. Don't be just all the time wanting to go in your room. We are going to buy a house one time. And we was going to buy, and it was up for sale. And we was going to buy it before we built. And then I was looking and... and uh, and, and, and the daddy said, uh, I'm going to take you upstairs and show you the upstairs. But he said, now, this is my son's room, and uh, uh, you'll have to change some things in this room. We walked in, opened that door, and the walls were a soot black. Every wall. The ceiling was black. There were demons hanging on the walls. Skulls. Now, I'm going to tell you all again about this Halloween thing, whether you like it or not. You find me one glorious thing in Halloween that's the, except death, fear, torment, spirits of hell, skulls, things all. Amen, Brother Wayne. All but it's for kids. Give your, your kids that got 364 days a year to have something, amen, without celebrating a bunch of demons. Amen, Brother Wayne. Amen. If you understand what all that's about, and I ain't got time to get in that this morning. The evil spirits are behind all that stuff. Yes, sir. And today they're very angry. They want to get, if they can get a latch on you, brother, they're not going to turn it loose. Paul said, there's a door open to me, but I can't get through sometimes because there are so many adversaries. But I wonder what God wants to do in this church, but we've got adversaries against us. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to be, we're going to have some tenacity. Grit. Is so that what you call it? Guts. What y'all call it? Determination. What? Oh, I love that. Come here. <laughs> Tell them again, buddy. Heart. A heart. Heart. A yeah. heart. It's hard to go. Push forward. 
heart. That's right. Come, come here. You're doing good. I know if we ain't got much heart in the things. That's why it's easy to quit with things. Turn it around. Come on, somebody. I know that God's good this morning. No heart. Boy, I'll, I'll preach to that next time in that. It's all in the heart. I know it's all in the heart. How bad do you want it? See, when somebody calls me, come here, Kyle, come here again. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, let me use somebody else. Come here, Derek. Let me use you, buddy, would you? Would you use you? Somebody says, pray for my son. I've had people, I don't, a lot of, I know your mama, but I, I ain't seen her a long time, so this ain't, this ain't you, okay? But pray for my son, because if God don't touch him, he's going to die, he's going to kill himself. And I see the pain in her eyes, and I see the hurt in her spirit, and I see that she wearies, and she frets, and sometimes she goes to sleep, and she wakes up, or she hears a sarene, and she hears the amulets, and she says, oh, God, I hope it ain't going where he's at. And you can watch her. She trembles, and she hurts. And then I, she'll come up to me, and she'll say, Brother Wayne, pray for Derek. That he don't go to hell. And I pray for him like I'd pray if it was Isaac or one of my sons. See, if you don't get that kind of heart in you, you ain't going to have much. When somebody needs prayer, if you don't want to come up, that's fine. But you reach out and say, oh, God, what if that was me there? I pray for the folks that had the torn of the all the of the troubles down in Florida and Louisiana, North Carolina, and Texas, Georgia, Alabama, everywhere all this been. Amen. They're hurting. Many of them ain't got homes. They're still recovering from the last one. That one man said the insurance is not even paid for the last hurricane that came by. And now I've got nothing. It damaged his business. It damaged his home the first time. This time he don't even have neither one. Oh, God, when a church can touch the heart of God, we need to touch the heart of God. Sister Clara, I don't know, last, last Wednesday, she was supposed to have a liver, it's okay to say that, I'm sure, a liver transplant. They sit on there in pre-op, ready to go. I mean, they're getting ready to take her liver out and put another one in. Somehow it failed. The, the liver did at the last minute or something. Some test didn't come back good. She'd be three months just in, in recovery to a point. So it'd been after Christmas for wait a minute, everyone's more seen her again. But something failed. But I thought, God, I can still bring her to you. And God, before she needs another liver, she'll get one from you. <laughs> Glory. See, if we can come together, there's nothing that God can't do. Jesus saw their faith. He saw their faith and it moved. Not the, not, not the paralytic man, not the man. He saw their faith that brought him. If God will see my faith for you, then you both can get something. Amen, church. You're not just to come here and holler, well, I got Brother Wayne off my back for another week. That's how some people feel sometimes. If you come to church or not, it's not going to stop me. But you love will get stopped. Because you can miss the time that God wants to. And there's times we all I understand that. But I'm talking about just no concern. You know what I'm talking about. Just no concern. No concern. Not reliable. Somebody shout hallelujah. See, since you've got a son dying. Or is very sick. Brother Buddy, but God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you, his family. God's going to touch him. Can I get a witness in here? Are you willing to climb up on that roof and scratch it open for somebody else? Are you willing to do something for somebody? Forget about yourself all the time. I'm in a battle. I can't know why I'm always in a battle. 
I don't mean this wrong, but grow up. Amen. Put some sand in your shoes. Grow up. Be a man. How old are you? 33. 33. You're the age that Jesus was when they crucified him. How many kids you got? Two? Three. three. Well, two and one on the way. My goodness. My goodness. Man. Look how God's blessed you. Amen. Got your wife. Hallelujah. Them kids think the sun sets and rises in you sometimes. I told me Rose in the east and set in the west. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But God's still good. Look what God's done for you. If God could open your eyes today and let you see what he's done. But you know what? If you could pray and say, God, open Brother Wayne's eyes, he could see too. I know we all need to see this morning. God's blessed you. are the best mom and daddy you could ever have, girls. He really has. Only better mom and daddy that I know than them is us and Sister Jane. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. God's good. Sarah, God's good to you. See, see, God's good to you. Please him. Walk in. Ask God to touch you. Ask God to give you something that you need to keep you in this hour. Am I preaching to y'all? I preached to y'all. The other day, somebody asked me about an elderly minister, and he's done dead now. And oh, and they just talk how great and how good he was. I said, Why don't you do tell him that when he is alive? It ain't worth a hoot now to a point. Amen. I wonder this morning what you need God to touch you in. See, they became one with the paralytic man, paralytic man. They became one with him. And it was their faith that brought him. It was their faith that said, we won't stop until we bring him to Jesus. Can I get a witness in here this morning? Allison, God loves you this morning. You didn't think I know your name, did you? Did I get it right? No. Addison. I got close. I'm in the family. I know you're my sheep. <laughs> Addison and Allison. What's the difference? Just a nail. God's still good. He knows that God's still good. Because he's a mighty good God this morning. If I can get somebody, if I can get somebody that's willing to get them to Jesus in this church, don't quit. You're going to get hindrances. You're going to get a slap on the face. You're going to get a bang every now and then. You'll get a poke in the gut every now and then. You're going to feel that old discouragement hit you so hard that it's going to turn you sideways. But you got to be safe. I'm going to the rooftop. I'm going through the roof. Would anybody raise your hand and say, I'm going through the roof this morning? Say it again, I'm going through the roof. Go through the roof. It'll be worth it when you, and you know what the first thing the Lord said to the man when they got him down there? Well, I'll declare, if that ain't uh, Derek, he looks at him, he does this. He says, son, your sins are forgiven you. He released him in his spirit. He released him from the chains and the bondages of hell. Can I preach another minute here? He released him. That man, if he had never got a healing in them legs or everywhere, all it needed, he was a free man and he could walk out there saying, look what the Lord has done. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I tell the devil, devil, I'm free. And I'm going to tell you something else, devil. I'm the righteousness of God. Jesus, what you did at Calvary, what you did, you paid it all and made me righteous. Can I get a witness? I'm on the blood. I'm in the blood. And the blood is over me. Can I get a witness? You're free by the grace and the mercies. And he's free this morning by the blood of Jesus. 
Man, you've been good to me this morning. <laughs> and see, when I get a, then he says, you're forgiven. I forgive you. You're no longer bound by those things. You've been cut loose from that. Now, I want you to take up your, the bed that you laid on. And I want you to walk out of here. A whole man. Body, soul, and spirit. And God knows how. You'll never forget something. I can't forget some things. But, but the thing about it is, it won't have this effect on you that it hurts you. It won't bother you. You'll know it's there, but you'll say, thank God, I'm free from it. The pain, the anguish. Can I get a witness in the house? And the Lord touched that man. And he touched him in such a way. It wasn't real. But you look over yonder. It's because four guys would not quit on you. It's because somebody said, I won't take no for an answer when God says there's a yes in the midst. Can I get a witness in this house? I don't say God wants you to have a yes this morning. Amen. I love the old song that we used to sing. Standing on the promises of Christ, my Savior. Standing on the promises of Christ, my Lord. When you stand on the promises of God, they're still yes. That's how you please God. Go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, as I close this morning. Hallelujah. You can go be seated if you want to, but boy, I tell you what, where you stand that feels pretty good. <laughs> Don't it? A little warm up here. Huh? A little warm? That's good. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. You can be seated if you like. Listen to me. Without faith... Everybody read it with me. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. You can't please God without faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that he's God. How many knows he's God this morning? How many knows he's God this morning? Come here, son. I want to ask you a question. Come here, Derek. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. You believe in a God? You believe there is a real, true God? I ain't talking about some fashion form, a little old G God. I ain't talking about some kind of an idol out here. Do you believe there's a God that made the heavens and the earth, that heavens is thrown and earth is his footstool? You believe that? You really believe that? Mm -hmm. You believe that God knows everything that you do or won't do or can't do? You believe that? Mm -hmm. You believe that God will save you from any sin? Yeah. You believe he'll set you free from any sin? Hallelujah. You believe there's anything that God can't do for you? Then I've took all your excuses, haven't I? Just like me, God took all my excuses. And when I can't make it on my own, I got somebody to help me. You know, that's why church is important. Amen. Ask a man a while back. He said, I don't need to go to church. I said, I don't need your church. He said, church is like pouring water off a duck's back. I said, when you get discouraged, who's going to pray for you? Who's going to help you? He said, well, I'll pray for myself. I said, is that working? Somebody shout hallelujah. I, don't be, I ain't being mean. I ain't being cruel. I just got to tell you the truth. Well, that's right. Amen. There's nothing God can't do for you this morning. I ain't preached 90 miles an hour, but I want, I want something to, to burn in your heart as it burns in mine this morning. Hallelujah. By the power of God. Amen. Raise your hands all this building as they come. Prepare to come to the music this morning. Tell your neighbor God is. Hallelujah. And that he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently, they don't quit. When you get a conviction, as you told me the other day, and oh, I mean, I'm, the devil wants you to come back to that, that it holds you instead of you hold it. Raise your hand and say, yes, Lord. Raise your hand and say, God, you're a rewarder this morning. Say it again, God, you're a rewarder. Say it with me, God, you're a rewarder. Say it again with me. God, you're a rewarder. God, I may have to bring my marriage to you. Maybe your marriage is crippled. It may be your marriage is suffering this morning. You may have lost concern, love, and don't care. 
You're that person in that stretcher this morning. Maybe Brother Wayne said, let me tell you something. I pray and ask God for wisdom probably sometimes ten times a day. Sometimes I may say something, and I say it correctly, but you misinterpreted the way you perceived it. And you get hurt offended at me over something I didn't say or do. There's no way with 140, 50 people in here that I can say everything in a way that everybody goes, oh. If I do, there's something wrong with me. Sometimes I'm going to stir your heart. Sometimes you'll, you'll swear up and down that Jalen, Jalen, Jalen has called us and talked to us. She ain't even got her number that I know of. She don't ever call. Johnny, don't tell me nothing about you. That rat. I mean, no, no, no. Johnny don't say, never said, never said a harm word about you. I may have asked him something. He'd say, Derek's Derek. Somebody say amen. Not that, and I honor you for that, sir. You know, this morning, some of y'all need to dig through the roof. You need to dig through that roof. Get to Jesus this morning. Why wait? I know we've got every excuse in the world. We've got every reason why. But those are not going to work. He saw their faith. Would you raise your hands? Stand to your feet. Thank you. Raise your hands this morning all over this building. And ask God. Just ask Him, God, I want, I've just got to touch you. It can be my marriage. It can be my just my personal needs this morning. God, I don't know, God, even how I feel anymore, but I ask you to touch me this morning. Touch me this morning. I'm going to open this altar up. Come on. I want you to tear the roof off this morning. And walk down this front. If you're lost this morning, if you're hurting, if you're just cold, indifferent, lukewarm, God wants to touch you this morning. Come on, would you walk down this aisle and say, Lord, just here am I this morning. God, I'm hurting. God, I'm broken. God, I feel helpless. But God, I need you this morning. By the power of God, would you come? Come on. Come on. There's some folk coming this morning. Would you come? Come on, come on, somebody else this morning. Come on, God wants to touch you this morning. Come on, they're coming. Lord, I'll serve you honestly. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, come on, come on, come on, let God touch you this morning. Come on, let God touch you this morning. I'll deep and tear the roof off, Lord, just to get to you. Come on, come on, talk to him this morning. Can we get somebody to come and say, I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to pray with you this morning. Can we get somebody to help? Come on, somebody come and pray with me. This time, Lord, I'll serve you. Honestly, and I'll go down Come on. Seven times. Every one it takes this morning. Every one it takes this morning. I'll leave and tear the roof off. Tear it off. Lord, just to get to you. Come on. You. Would you like to pray this morning? The mercies of God. The compassion of God. Would you come? This morning, come on, they're still coming this morning. Come on, let God touch you this morning. What will it take? What will it take to get you to Jesus? Don't let no hindrance, let nothing stop you.
power by the power of the Holy Ghost. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. This time, Lord, I'll serve you honestly. Listen to it. And I'll go down seven times. A tree I'll even climb. I'll paint the town the roof off. Lord, just to get to you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'll get down on my knees. Thank you, Lord. At the foot of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost. For a tree. Raise your hands all over this building. The sanctuary and say, God, I'm in a difficult place. I'm in a difficult place. But God, I refuse to turn around. I'm going all the way by the power of God. I refuse to look back. I refuse to look back. How many refuses to look back this morning? How many refuses to look back this morning? tell you, you give that hidden spirit room, it'll hinder you, it'll hinder your wife, it'll hinder your children, it'll hinder your neighbor, it'll hinder anybody you get around. I had a person one time, they got several people in their little clique, unless that one person moved, they all sit there. If he moved, they all tore the benches apart. I got in the middle of that little click and I said, that ain't gonna happen right here. If you can't move on the power of God, you ain't gonna move just because somebody else is doing it. Just a, amen, Brother Wayne. That'll handle the house of God more than anything in the world. You need to know what you know and get a hold of it and shake the devil loose. Raise your hands and love him this morning.
You'll go down seven times if you have to. You'll climb a tree like Zacchaeus. Or you'll tear the roof off. Or I'll get down on my knees at Calvary. Folks, let me tell you something. I was in the tent ministry for 34 years. God only asked me one time to get on my knees and walk around the, crawl around that tent. But that was the time that I needed to do that. There's a time that God's going to ask you to get out of that comfort zone. Break them hindering spirits because there's always going to be there to hinder you. They'll hinder you from getting to Jesus. They'll hinder you from getting to Jesus. But I got my mind made up. I'm going to get to him. If I can't get to him by myself, I'm going to get four or five people to help me. But I'm going to get to Jesus. How many determined you're going to get to Jesus today? Hallelujah. With somebody... Give the Lord a great big shout of praise tonight and today. Scotty's his name. Mike. Micah. It's good to have you this morning, Micah, for your first time. I missed you. It's good to have you, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise this morning. Young lady, God meets your need this morning. God touched you this morning. First time being here. Are you first time being here too? Amen. He's a good God. Give her the Lord a good hand. Touch her heart this morning. Come on and give God a praise. I'll give, this, give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Jerry, come up here, son. Brother Buddy, Brother Jeff, Brother... Josh, Jason, Isaac, Micah, this is Caleb, Caleb, <laughs> this is Brother Jason's work crew, God bless his heart, <laughs> let's ask God to touch these folks, amen, by the power of God, Isaac come here son, yeah I had several dreams, Every one of you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the 
name of Jesus. Pastor Red said, <laughs> <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, reach your hands this way. Y'all just join hands together. Father, I ask you to bless them this morning. Curse every destructive spirit, ever hindering demon. God, anything that would come against them. God, you just give them the strength to be blessed and to press on. God, keep them safe. God, and prosper. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, I ask you for that this morning. God, of your blessings. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, church ain't over yet, so just be real reverent for a moment. Don't leave unless you have to. Sister Laura, I want to pray for you this morning. Sister Jean does. Jason, bring, your whole family can come if they like. Lord, for Sister Laura, Brother Jason, this family, Father, God, that hedge, plead the blood of Jesus against every foul enemy, every destructive spirit. Father, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God, I thank you for it. God, I believe you. We honor you, God. Shall not. Shall not. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who's that God's a good God? Let me say this before we dismiss this morning. I don't know. I can't say because I don't know. But yesterday morning we were getting ready to come home. And we got delayed about 30 minutes waiting at a place. We shot back on I-65, and uh, drove about three miles, and the traffic come to a halt. We had to route us off, take us down. To, we was going to take us downtown Louisville, and uh, we got up there. We got on the bridge. He got down to one lane. They shot us off downtown and looked over to our left. And there was a semi sitting crossways of the road or turned over. And the, the semi had turned around, jackknife somehow, and might have climbed back up on top of the trailer. I don't know if there was cars under it. I don't know what was that. We couldn't see because of the wall. But that semi was demolished. And we could have been under that semi. So sometimes God just knows how to take care of us when we don't know what to do ourselves. We might not have been in it. I don't know. But about from about from when that happened to that time we had would have been just about the time. 